We will call the rules committee meeting uh, to order here. Councillor Austin, would you please bless the meeting? Certainly. Lord, we come to you today grateful for this opportunity to be of service to, uh, to the Cherokee people and to you. And uh, we ask that you guide us in all that we do. You uh, lead us in uh, with a servant's heart in all that we do. And uh, bless the Cherokee Nation, bless the United States, thank, and uh, bless those who, uh, who uh, serve this country in the military. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Roll call, Shelley. Yes, Joe Berg. Honey. Brian Warner. Honey. Bill Anglin. Honey. Keith Austin. Here. Charlie Bezard. John Friedman. Honey. Mike Gobbin. Here. Kane Duncan. Honey. Wanda Hatfield. Uh, honey. Rex Jordan. Here. Dick Lay. Honey. Mike Shambaugh. Here. Mary Bakershaw. Honey. E.O. Smith. Here. Denise Taylor. Here. Victoria Vasquez. We have <clears throat> This time we drop down to approval of minutes. So moved. A second. motion to approve. Got a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Reports, Marshal Service, Shannon Buell. Shannon? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, other than the report, I do have to uh, say that uh, HR has finished our evaluation on the marshal's pay, We're going to apply for the BIA. And uh, Anita Christie with uh, Human Resources uh, did a fantastic job. Uh, I, I cannot say enough about what she did to analyze it. There's a lot of numbers she had to crunch, a lot of things she had to look at. Uh, the Attorney General's office. Uh, uh, were, was instrumental in making sure we met the letter of the law and I'm proud to say that in ENF uh, Lacey's going to present so we're in compliance. Uh, Anita also put in uh, that every year we'll be in compliance from now on so I, I think that's <laughs> fantastic. That's so, a good thing. Yeah. Other than that are there any questions? Any questions for our marshal? I have one uh, that you might know uh, at Hard Rock when there's a an event going on we have uh, uh, canines uh, uh, that go in and I think they're on contract and most of those people are mm -hmm. uh, Tulsa Police Department there yes who's in charge of those contracts uh, that would be C and E or C and B. It's not yeah. us. Yeah, they're in charge. So you have no we have knowledge no of knowledge how that's of that's even done. Not at all. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Good report. Thank you. Office Attorney General Chrissy Nemo. Oh, okay. yeah. A couple of things for you. Um, since I was here last time, we had oral argument in the ICWA case at the Fifth Circuit. Uh, myself and uh, Elena Ferris attended that. Um, our lawyers did better than theirs, so that's encouraging. Um, there was one point during the hearing where the attorney representing Texas kept talking about, he kept saying, our children, our children, our children, and one of the judges interrupted him and said, but they're not your children, they're tribal children. And we all wanted to stand up and clap, but we didn't. Uh, they're in court. Um, so the case has been submitted. We don't know when we will get um, an opinion on that. We think it'll be pretty quick because the court was reluctant to um, allow extensions and filing and they had a really strict deadline so we think that they're going to rule quickly on that. We will keep you updated. Um, we were really, um, we sent out a, a, a joint letter with the other three tribes involved um, thanking the Trump administration and specifically the Department of Justice attorney that was there. Um, when this case first started, we were not quite sure how the federal administration would defend ICWA, and he did a fantastic job and defended it 100%, and we were really thankful for the, the Department of Justice attorney who was there, and he was really good and did a good job. So we wanted to um, thank him and um, the administration for the support of ICWA because this, is not, this fight's not over. And on that note, we have been named as a defendant in a new ICWA case in the Western District in Arkansas. Um, it was a case that in state court was a step-parent adoption and um, Childless Cherokee, Cherokee Nation was noticed and intervened. 
and the mother and stepfather voluntarily dismissed the state court action and filed a federal federal court action asking the federal court to hold that ICWA was unconstitutional because it was based on race. Um, we have um, Stacy Leeds is going to be representing us in that case and a former law student of hers who is a Cherokee who has a who is in a firm in Fort Smith. Um, they're going to be our outside counsel on that. We've already filed for a motion to extend the time to answer that because we only get 21 days but when the United States government is a defendant they get 60 days so we asked the court to give us an extension of time that would make our answer due the same time that theirs is which is May 6th um, so it's um, it's the same type of arguments made in the other case uh, Goldwater which is the organization that's pushing <coughs> these cases is a party um, to this case in Arkansas <coughs> Um, this is a different circuit than the Fifth Circuit, so we think that, you know, they may not necessarily want to win both of these cases. They may want to win one and lose one because in the likelihood that the Supreme Court hears it goes up. So um, we're going to continue to, to see these cases and we're going to continue to defend them. So I, I will keep you all updated when we get decisions and new cases. Um, we had a couple of questions about the Oklahoma settlement in the opioid case and um, the extent to which that affected our case. Um, it doesn't have any technical effect on our case, um, doesn't change where we're at. Um, it is the first case, it was the first case set for trial, um, and it was the first case to have a settlement. That case is not done because uh, the Oklahoma Attorney General, just like we did, named multiple defendants, and that settlement was only with one of them. So they're still set to go to trial um, <clears throat> next month against the other defendants. What the case does do is, um, it's kind of a benchmark for all of the other cases and gives us an idea of what damages are and um, you know what can be expected and that type of thing so it's uh, it's exciting for the state of Oklahoma um, I, I don't know how many of you followed it the the total settlement was 270 million dollars and almost 200 of that is going to OSU for a um, national treatment center in Tulsa um, so um, hopefully that our citizens will be able to take advantage of that as well. Um, I also think that part, you know, they, they really focused on calling that a national center. So in other cases, when people ask about, you know, relief, they can say, well, look, we've already given $200 million to this national center in Tulsa that can also benefit other states. So I don't think we will see that type of settlement repeated um, in other states. So. Um, and the only other note I had, um, <clears throat> just an update that is no update, is we don't have a decision on the Murphy case. Um, uh, one case from that setting has been released, but we, we don't anticipate um, probably till mid-late June that we get a ruling on this because we think it's a difficult case, um, and the court usually keeps those longer, but um, it could come at any time, and you all will know as soon as we do on that. So I'll take questions if you have any. <laughs> Any questions for, yes, Councilor Schell. Uh, mine's not about your report, which is very good, thank you. Uh, I sent you all an email about a month ago, and, and it was about Facebook. I've got a constituent who wanted to know what's the legal use on Facebook on these websites where they use Cherokee Nation. Is there a time that you all, we ever step in and say, whoa, you know, hold the brakes on this, because there are several websites that utilize the name Cherokee Nation. And that was the question. Can you? Sure, and I, I can talk about it a little more broadly because it's not just websites. Um, so long as someone is not holding themselves out in the official capacity of Cherokee Nation, we typically don't get involved in those. Um, for one, we would do nothing but that if, if we spent our time um, contacting people and saying you can't use the word Cherokee Nation. Um, we get questions all the time about our seal. Um, we don't have, under Cherokee law, we don't have any restrictions on the use of our seal so people can put it on um, <clears throat> clothing or flags or signs or whatever. Um, we have occasionally in the past sent some cease and desist letters to folks, but it was when they were what appeared to be holding themselves out as the official Cherokee Nation or selling things that they said official Cherokee Nation gear. Um, that's one that we've we get a lot of complaints on you can <clears throat> these websites where you can design your own t-shirts or whatever and you, you go in and type it and they just put a t-shirt and it shows you what your logo would look like and um, there would be people selling things that said official Cherokee Nation and they would have Cherokee language on them um, so there have been a, a handful of times when um, we felt that someone was um, 
presenting themselves in, in an official capacity. <clears throat> I do know one on some of those Facebook pages, um, because we've got complaints about this in the past, that people have modified some of those and made clear in the description or the about that they are not um, an official site. And for us, that's good enough to kind of say, we don't really have any cause of action here to say you have to take the name off when you when you specifically say in the description or the about section that, that you're not affiliated with Cherokee Nation. Um, so that's generally kind of. This person was particularly disturbed because they had Google Cherokee Nation on Facebook and came up with this website thinking it was an official website. And then there were some terrible things written, bad language or something, I can't remember exactly. And that's why their concern was based on And those are, you know, we, we, we don't have any control over how the Google algorithm works and, and what comes up. Um, I can tell you, I, I occasionally look for the official Cherokee Nation site on Facebook. And if you just type in Cherokee Nation in Facebook, you sometimes will get lots of things that are in no way related before you get down to to the one that's actually Cherokee Nation. Um, but again, unless unless we see someone who is presenting themselves in some relationship to or some official capacity of Cherokee Nation, there's not a lot we can do about it. And again, it would be it would be so time consuming that we would we would never do anything else. Um, you know, there are hundreds of of groups that that claim affiliation with Cherokee out there. So. Anybody else? Did you have questions? Yeah, Councilor Critton. Christy, had you had a chance to get with David on maybe see what we may be able to do about the, the gardens and the, the wood? I, I haven't had any follow-up with him on that. I, I can't speak for him on to whether or not he's working with it, but I haven't, I haven't talked to him further on it. Okay, so I'll need to follow up yeah. with him. Okay. I, I'd be happy to help him. We just haven't, we haven't connected on it. So. Is that something we could set up or that's going to be up to you guys to I, get together? I think he is working on it. Um, I, I don't know that it's, you know, the legal issue is you can't use X to do X, but. Um, Did you ever hear what happened with the, the load of hay? Nothing. <laughs> the, there was a load of hay, right? Yes, and it did not go. There was hay sold, as we do, but Cherokee Nation did not take hay anywhere. So Kind of like. You can't believe everything you see on Facebook. Imagine that. <laughs> no, no, I didn't get that. I didn't get that from Facebook. I got it from someone who who works in natural resources. And the day after we were talking about, you know, the wood, you can't do X for X. Uh, they called me and said there was a load of hay getting ready to go to Lawrence, Kansas. And it, it didn't. That's what I can tell you. Um, we do sell hay, and uh, Mr. Inlow, if he's here, knows knows more about this, and we have a process. But it did not happen. I, I can tell you that. We did not take hay to Lawrence, Kansas. We did not. Yeah. Uh, now, oh, yeah. Go ahead. So um, we did sell uh, 12 bales to an individual Cherokee citizen, just like we've done with several other Cherokee citizens uh, throughout the last several years. Um, Let me just go slow here, <clears throat> Todd. Mm -hmm. I'm a slow soaker. All right, we sold hay mm -hmm. that was that was cut on, I guess, Cherokee Nation property, just like we we charge to have the gardens tilled, right? Same department. In the past, they've charged to let somebody get the gardens <clears throat> tilled. I just want to make sure we're on the same. Not the same because we're not going out and doing it. It's our hay. It's our it's our, it's our, our property. We our pay it. We bell it. Yeah. And people can buy it from us. We have a policy for that, and it's something that's going on. Now, how have we got that hay to them in the past? Uh, individuals come pick it up, and that's what we did. That's what we did in this particular instance as well. So they came that, and they that came in, and got it. Yeah, that individual asked if we could deliver it to Kansas. Now who cut it? Um, um, the natural resources crew. Okay. Because it's our resources. It's our land that so they, 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 they harvested it. the hay from. They cut it mm -hmm. and sold it. Correct. Okay. Right. We And we were asked to see if we could facilitate transporting it to Kansas. We did some checking. What we did is the alternative for that individual is we found a tarot vendor. Uh, that could transport the hay for them. We connected those two parties together, and he paid a tarot vendor to transport the hay to Kansas for a family member. 
I don't I don't think that was the original intent, but that's that's good that yeah, it that, well, that worked out that, that way. That's what we were asked to evaluate by was, that individual right, and right. We, we did consult just like we right. did on these other things. We consulted with finance, we consulted with the Attorney General's office, and uh, we were advised that we should not use Cherokee Nation resources to do any of that. So we did not. Um, we were trying to explore to find out delivery of when they would like the hay. Now this was after our last meeting, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So Sounds like, uh, uh, we, we did all the... Sounds like you did due diligence and exactly. kept it a level playing field. And I look forward to getting with Dave and uh, you know, whoever wants to be involved. And like I stated earlier, there's lots of big and little things. and. I'm sure we can figure out a long term I think I have a possible solution uh, for the garden tilling operation um, I've got a little bit more uh, research to do um, in looking at some of the other tribes and what they're currently doing and then I think we also have a grant opportunity that's going to come available when we have about a 45 day window to put an application together to solve this moving forward well, I appreciate you yeah. thank you Thank you. Good. Anybody else? Yes, Councillor Walking Stick. Thank you. Hey, uh, Chrissy, as you know, we're in, a, we're in the middle of the uh, campaign. A bunch, bunch of different candidates. Are we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have guessed. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, you know, I'm curious, like, what is, uh, I guess my question is, is reading the uh, election code, and as far as campaign contributions, <coughs> reading some of the expenditures of other candidates, uh, what is uh, what is the Cherokee Future LLC? I, that is not a question for me, sir. Okay. So, you know, as it talks about campaign contributions in the election code, under 44A, the, the period for acceptance of campaign contributions for any candidate not be prior to a six months of the, the, the election day, the general election. <clears throat> this uh, this Cherokee Future LLC is um, is this a is this a pack or what what is this? Sorry, that uh, that is not a, a question for me. I, that is a election commission. It's election commission or it's the the person who owns it or runs it or set it up well i guess the question is is you know with our election code it's, it's very broad it doesn't it doesn't address um or, or re regulate uh independent expenditures like like the federal elections or state elections do so therefore if if there is an independent experience going on, it allows individuals to go around our campaign contribution laws of a maximum amount of $5,000 and the potentially of being anonymous. Our law does not allow that. Do, do we have laws that regulate independent expenditures? There can't be any. Our law says that all donations must be made by an individual, can't be made by a corporation, can't be made by an organization, that they're limited to $5,000, and that expenditures must be made on behalf of a candidate and recorded. So, <clears throat> so you can't receive any campaign contributions prior to the six months, is that correct? That is correct, that's what the law says. This um, uh, Cherokee Future LLC was purchased prior to December for $100 by, um, by Chuck Hoskins Sr., Chief of Staff. Is that a scenario? Is that a fact? That's a fact. Okay. So I guess my question is, Attorney General's opinion, would this be considered, in an, an, a, a uh, getting an opinion, would this be considered a campaign contribution? Well, I think the way this is handled is that if there's a violation of campaign finance, it's made to the election commission under the election law. If, but, but if that guys, is alleged. You, you guys I'm, represent 
the election commission. No, we don't. They have independent they counsel. So the way this happens is if the election, Harvey, Harvey Chafin Harvey is Chaffin, the election commission's attorney. If someone alleges a campaign finance violation, they report that to the election commission. If it is something that needs investigated, for example, everything that's needed to look at isn't there or whatever, under the current law, they refer that to our office for investigation. We conduct an investigation and give our findings to the election commission. If there's a violation, then they can take action as far as disqualification or whatever. If it's a criminal violation, our office would file charges. But the, the, the way to do this is not a hypothetical or factual question to us in the form of an AG opinion about what something is or is not. It is a report to the election commission that there's an alleged campaign violation and then there are steps in the law on how that's handled. Let me ask you this as an uh, assistant attorney general. Uh, how can we reform our election laws to add more transparency and accountability so that we can regulate independent expenditures? I, I think the election commission has already no, made no, no, some no, no, no. recommendations. I'm not, I'm not asking the election commission. I'm asking the attorney general's office. I, I think our law already and, and prohibits. I want you guys to address our tribal council as a body because this is all new to us. It's all foreign. And it's not new. It's, it's not the new law at all. hasn't changed. Not? No, no. I mean, th th this law has has been on. Uh, no, 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 not the law. For about regulating about regulating independent well, expenditures. The is, is Todd, the, the, is the responsibility and the duty and I is there a law in place that regulates yours. independent expenditures or the election code? The council makes the laws, including the election code. You, as a counselor, have the ability. Uh, to suggest Charles to this body that if passed will, will, will become the law of the Cherokee Nation and the Election Commission will follow it. The Election Commission follows the laws and the rules that, are, that have been set by this body. So uh, if you're asking who can do this, it's the Tribal Council to which you are a member of. Who, who in here this poll of hand knows what independent expenditure is? One, two... Three, three people on this council know what input expenditure is. So the problem is, is that with independent expenditures, you can give above and beyond the 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 original campaign contribution amount. That would be illegal under our election code. It would. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's all, that's all I need to know. Right, thanks, Speaker. Okay. Anybody else? Come yes, Councilor Critton. Yeah, so the thing I've asked it before, but the Attorney General's office is kind of the ceiling. If the Election Commission finds something, they can send it to the Attorney General's office, and that's where it kind of stops. If it needs right? to be investigated. They, they are independent. They can make, if there's evidence presented to them of some violation of some campaign law that on its face they can see then they take whatever action they they are allowed to take under the code the law says because they don't have an investigative body the they, election commission right they they don't have any my question is where does it go from there it goes to us for investigation and, and where does it go from there it depends on what it is if it's nothing it goes nowhere if it's a violation if we find something that that campaign law was violated we would send it back to them and say here's our findings if it was a criminal we would file charges the, the law requires us to make a report back to the election commission for them to take action but as uh, miss nemo said if it is a criminal uh violation well then our office handles that who, who decides if it's a criminal Attorney, Attorney, General. General. Attorney General. As we do for any other right. crime. Yeah. Right. And it, but I just want to be clear, there's no other eyes looking in on it besides Election Commission, Attorney General's office. Well, eventually a court, if it's a criminal violation. If the Attorney General office finds it criminal. Yeah, that's the way prosecution works. So, so no other eyes until you decide it needs to go to court. Right. That's looking at that's it. why you and have the election a, commission. Yeah. That's well, as a criminal matter. That's why you have uh, why the state has. I'd like, I'd like some other eyes on it, and I'm sure you differ. But uh, I'd I'd uh, I may be the only one in here. But but I, you know, a lot of people use outside agencies to look at some things. So, so but 
I'm just making sure that's the ceiling. It just bounces right there well, unless, unless you find. That's the way all governments work. All governments work doing what? That have a prosecution, prosecutorial function. They have. Well, I'm just concerned with the Cherokee Nation what? government. So, so, you know, outside eyes, that's kind of. Well, you make the law, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, and I can tell you this. If I'm still around in uh, August or June, whenever that is, that's priority. One of them. You know, you got to prioritize wood, keeping our elders fed. But once you get past those needs, I can promise you more transparency in these election cycles. That's that's going to be on my agenda. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yes, Councilor Lay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'm not sure if this is your question or government relations. I see maybe one or two behind you there, but uh, is it proper to do voter registration in our clinics? It's not improper. And, and is it going on? Is it, is it going on? I, I think that it is. In our clinics? I think it's probably uh, important to increase the uh, opportunities for all Cherokee citizens to engage in your government. And if that's uh, having the opportunity to register votes at, uh, at any facility, I think and, we and, should encourage that. And would it be important to know who's, who's there at that time period? You wouldn't want a candidate there. No, you would, you wouldn't no. want that. That should be a, a function of uh, uh, government relations. Or like I said, I think that should be encouraged throughout all of our <laughs> facilities. It, it, that, that, that is one of the most precious rights for a Cherokee citizen Absolutely. is to engage in your government, and you but, do that by voting. here again, my point, Todd, and listen, is that you wouldn't want uh, a candidate or that candidate's Friend. sponsor's staff there doing that process, would you? We, you know, uh, uh, anyone registering votes at our facility should be an employee of the Cherokee Nation. And should be... Uh, not affiliated, that's it. Well, I, I can't tell what someone's affiliation, but right. they should be a government employee. It shouldn't be a candidate and their staff. Let's get this. Let's it should it not be in a, a candidate or an independent right. uh, uh, worker or volunteer for that candidate. Sure. It should be a, a, should a government be, employee. Right. So is government relations having uh, voter registration in our clinics? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we have been doing that for years. Um, in fact, they're in Nawada today. Yep. Um, and and who's, who's with that group? Never mind. Tell me later. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I could tell you who's with that group later. I just Thank you. Yeah, but uh, we have been doing that in several clinics as uh, in the times that we were doing uh, community meetings in the 14 counties, we were going out and doing voter registration there as well. And then we've also been doing voter registration at the at-large meetings trying to get in front of as many Cherokees to, to meet them on their ground rather than having them always come to the election commission to do it. So we've, we've been trying to meet citizens where they live, where they visit the hospital, and make it easily accessible to them to do that. So. But the election commission's not doing it. They don't have anything. They, they don't have the staff and the time to actually send people out to different locations after I want to say it was December. Would, would not that be a function of the election commission instead of? They, they, the election commission does do voter registration uh, at the community events. However, when the 2019 election kicked off for them, uh, they, uh, by their calendar, they stopped that. And uh, through, through government relations, we try to carry that and get as many people to register vote in tribal elections, state, and federal elections as well. So that's, with government relations and the Get Out the Vote initiative, we are covering not only tribal, but also state and federal elections as well. And we send I'll that information to directly to the election commission. I'll talk to you a little bit. Okay. Thanks, sir. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, Councilor Walker. Hey, Todd. Yes, sir. I know we discussed this last week, but are these, uh, these government relation employees, are they setting up a table or are they going to the department to the department? Uh, primarily, they're doing tables. We did uh, hit a few departments here in the complex uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, 
because we weren't getting much response for employees at different events and things like that. Uh, we collected somewhere around 75 um, voter registration just of employees that were not registered to vote or needed to be directed. Now, and I told you just last week as well, but you know, right now, you know, we've we've cultivated a spirit of fear in our Cherokee Nation complex. People scared to death. Just call it what it is. So when we're sending people going to department to department, it almost gives a perception that we're head hunting and people if they're not gonna vote, people are scared for their jobs. Okay? So it's one thing for you guys to set up a table. Well, I would disagree with uh, your hey, premise. Hold on, first that, all, don't interrupt that, me. That, that don't no interrupt me. Much. I'm talking about hold on, hold on. This I'm not done. Type of, uh, hey, uh, uh, hold, on. Uh, hold on, Todd. This now, is, David. <clears throat> so you're saying the different departments' employees are scared to death? Yeah, that wasn't my point, though. Okay, but that's what you said. That's correct. Well, let's just okay. be factual when we okay. make a comment. All right. Here. Yeah. Okay. So, hey, wait a minute, uh, Jamie Hummingbird. Your department, are they scared to death that people are, are registering them? No. I not really say, no. but um, no. one thing I have told my staff is whenever it comes to politics, that we try to not discuss politics. Absolutely. That's, that's what we try to do. Okay. So, so anyway, they're not scared to death from what I've seen, but yeah, that's, let's get our facts straight here. Because any word you say here, let, let's just, if you haven't done your research, like I said earlier, you have done your due diligence. Let's not make false allegations. I, I've now, got, I've got some calls. I'm going to give it back to you. Calls. He's got the floor. Okay. I, I, hold on. I've got hold on. Some I, hold on. I, hold on. on the oh, no, he's got the floor. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me finish here. So, okay. So, it's election time. You know, there's fear, whatever. So, we're sending people to department to department. Okay. And some of these staff with government relations work part time with some of the candidates, okay? And, you know, what you just said, Todd, you, you said that that's, that that's illegal or we're not gonna have that, or you say it's, it's acceptable for a candidate, uh, a volunteer or worker of a candidate to be on Cherokee Nation property, but they're on Cherokee time, going department to department, getting people registered to vote. Is that, is that a good, is that, is that allowable or not, not allowable? If they are performing their functions as a Cherokee employee, uh, that they will, they will do the the task that 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 is assigned to them. Now, what they do off hours, you know, if they want to support you, or Mr. Lay, or or, or, or uh, Mr. Hoskin, that's up to them. That means of, of, of what they of what they do, or you in your election. Thank you. uh, that that that's up that's up to them. Uh, but uh, if, uh, let's say, a government relations worker, you know, their job is to help facilitate the participation of a Cherokee citizen in the governmental process. That's registering to vote is, a, is, is probably the prime uh, 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 avenue to do that. So yes, the, the, if, if a government relations uh, employee is going from uh, door to door, in this complex, ask, hey, are you registered to vote? That's a good thing. No, no. And that's what they're doing. They're, 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 not, they're, they're, they're not browbeating people. I, I see them in the halls. They're hey, walking down. They're like, hey, does anyone need voter registration? You, you, you know what should have happened? You guys should have set up in the break room, have a table up there, get out to vote, and send an email out to all employees. So if you guys are wanting to vote, you guys come to the break room and get registered to vote. You guys go into the department to the department, headhunting, it's not a good thing. It, head, it, honey, it in our this opinion. is not it, political. It is, it is helping someone to, to make it as easy as possible for a person to the, the, exercise the people, their right to vote. The That's I, a good thing, Mr. The, Walking the, the people I That is to, a good thing. Okay. The, the, the people that I've talked to, okay. the, the, the employees that I've talked to said it was not a good thing. It was a scary thing. So okay. it's not about what we think. It's about what they probably should get registered and vote then. Well, I mean, that's the, what the process is here. This is not, the, no, it, this is not what's happening. These are people walking around with voter registration forms, just like the state does. In, you can go anywhere. They have them at public events, and people are, it's literally a voter registration drive. We want Cherokees to vote. But we so, also want them to vote. Now, let me, let me ask a question here. Are we doing anything different than what we did 
last year? Were we registering people and going to different departments we six have, months ago before we for everybody 10 years filed? At least. I mean, before anybody filed for candidacy, were we going to department? department asking people to register we used to have stacks of voter registration right. forms setting no. yes we were because there used okay. to be stacks all right that's what, I, and what, 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 in the what i'm the activity what i'm trying to get at is are we doing anything different no since the filing period that that would make our employees uncomfortable that's what i'm trying to get at here and if uh -huh. we are then it should be communicated at least to the council and say for you people we're going to have a voter registration drive. Now we do that at large communities. I understand that, but if we just go in different departments and we got staff going in trying to register people, you know, we haven't done that before that I can remember. If that's something we're doing, then we need to communicate it to the rest of the council. That's what we're doing. That way, we'll all we would all be in the know. Uh, Are you going to have a handful of people call Walk and Stick, call Kane in here, and say, you know, they come into our department and they ask us to register, good or bad? You know, it's it's not what we do in the in the ordinary. It's what I'm trying to say here. So anyway, uh, point walk state. You got any more questions? Let's move on. Okay. And my, my next point is is like you know if someone on my campaign wants to get in government relations and help you guys out, you know, <laughs> just let me know. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yes, Councilor Warner. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, not to keep. You know, you say beat a dead horse. I always say keep calling that same tale. Um, but we hear a lot of these things about, you know, fear and, and different things. My question is, as a councilman, I have the right to walk into any clinic. Correct? Okay. Now, as a councilman and a candidate, I think that's, a, that's kind of sticky grounds. Now, when you walk in there, you got to always remember where you're at. And uh, if you, I guess there's that fine line, you know, and I want to be respectful of every single individual that is in this campaign, has been in this and everything. And here we are taking all this time away from our Cherokee people, even though this is one of our greatest rights that we're talking about. But David, when you walk into Redbird Clinic, are you there as a councilman? Are you there as a candidate? Councilman. Okay. All right. I, that's all I, you know, I'm not going to say what I heard. I'm not, you know, or anything else. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Councilor Shambaugh. Well, I, I listened to this and um, I guess being involved in numerous elections in my past, um, I <coughs> have a little different point of view. Um, it is a right, you know, for people, and it's a, it's a big right for our Cherokee citizens to, to vote. But here's the deal about being registered to vote. I've run for office in several different things, and I promise you, during registrations, I go try to find people who have not been registered to vote. And I try to get them registered to vote, I go try to register as many people as I possibly can. Now, in the end, do I know that they're going to vote for me? Absolutely not. So you can't say that by getting registrations, you know who they're going to vote for. And you know, because in the end, being pressured or feeling you're pressured, that person's never in that voting booth when you go vote. When you do an absentee, that person's not there to watch you. You, you vote on an absentee, you put it in an envelope, that envelope is sealed, it is notarized. Nobody sees you vote. Nobody world. forces you to vote. That's it. I mean, I don't care if you're doing it correctly. You know, and, and you can say, and you can make the argument that, hey, this, you know, they're, they're doing this or doing that. And I've heard this several times in the last couple of months of, of allegations of this and allegations of that. But I'm telling you, I've sit here and I've seen one document presented at this at this council that told what somebody did or didn't do. That's the only piece of evidence I've seen presented to this council. That's it. I've been told I'm going to be shown evidence, and I have not. So whenever I hear that the people are people are scared for this or that reason, you know, I don't know if I buy that because I can't I can't make you do anything. Nobody can make you do anything. When you get in that voting booth, you do you vote for who you want to. It's it's private. So I don't know. I, I just don't 
buy all the conspiracy theories. I don't do that. Until I'm shown some evidence that this stuff is going on, I don't buy it. That's just my opinion, and I have sit here and listened to it, but nobody showed me anything but one document. And if you know why, and if, if I want to, in my job, what I do, I could take a day, and I could go find out the, the whole truth of what's going on with this other deal that was brought up, and I think I'll probably do that, because I am very well qualified to do that. Okay. But I'm saying we don't need to, we don't need to, we got to be careful when we make accusations without proper evidence. <clears throat> That's all I'm saying. That's all I got. <clears throat> okay. Yes, Counselor. Uh, my district's five. That's where Redbird's at. Within 30 minutes, I had three calls. People want to know why I was not at the clinic when other people were down there walking around in the clinic. And I told them I wasn't aware of that. And they said they told me that he was there with some other people. So we we'll talk about intimidation. I'm not going to get in on this, but I had three calls within 30 minutes. I want to know why he was down there in my territory. Yeah. For information, the, uh, the, the, count, the complex voter registration uh, project started in 2013. Okay. All right. Well, as elected officials, you are, you're allowed to go in any clinic that, that you want. You're representative. Uh, I always feel like the Cherokee Nation uh, is not just one district. If I want to go visit tribal members, I've been to every district. I try to visit every everybody. So, not as a candidate, as a council member. So, if you're doing that, you have every right to do that. When it comes, when you've put your name on that piece of paper that says you're a candidate, just follow the rules. Very simple. If you're going to be a candidate, follow the rules, and you can still visit anybody you want. We're going to wrap this up real quick because I I don't want to stay on this. All I say, if you're a Cherokee Nation candidate, you better have tough skin because it doesn't get any better. Councilor Crittman, let's cut it short. I think I'm done for now. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yes, Gwen Terrapin. short and sweet. Um, we've got 21 total requests for 2019 so far. 18 of those were GRAs, and none of those are outstanding. And then we had three FOIA requests, and those are still outstanding at this time. And each of you should have gotten a copy of the 2019 request and heard that. So other than that, I don't have anything else. Any questions for Gwen? We appreciate what you do. Thank you. Tax Commission, Sharon Swepston. You can always depend on Sharon. Afternoon. I believe you have my report. Uh, there's one change that I do need to make to it. It states that our next tax commission meeting was scheduled for March the 13th. That has been rescheduled for April the 24th. Uh, the commissioners canceled that meeting on my behalf uh, due to the death of my mom. So it's been rescheduled to April the 24th. Sorry to hear that. Sarah. I wish you'd been healed. Any questions for our tax commission lady? Good report. Gaming Commission. Jamie Hummingbird. Good afternoon. Just have one short um, update to provide the council uh, regarding the uh, Tahlequah Casino. Uh, everything is proceeding as scheduled. Um, everything's going very well over there. The, the staff just finished doing the installation of all of the gaming machines. They're kind of doing in uh, kind of cleanup mode at the moment, getting things ready for the testing phase, which will be beginning a week after next. Uh, so, so far, knock on wood, everything is uh, on schedule to open the facility on time. When is that date? Do you have an approximate? Uh, April 30th. April 30th. That's the date I saw. Okay. So with that, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Any questions? Yes, Councillor Taylor. Will you be increasing the number of games at the Telephone Casino? Yes, the uh, total machine count will go to four, uh, uh, from 402, I believe is what we have at Tahlequah now, to 525. 
and it's just machines only, no cards, no tables. Anybody else? You did good. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Dr. Nason Morton. Yes, counselor. I so. have a, I, in my, my, uh, my book here, I have to, I mean, a report from the election commission, but I don't see them on the agenda. Would they be here today? Mm. I, get a I don't think we get a paper report from them every month, but they only physically report quarterly. It's not their time. Oh, I thought with the election situation that they would be here. It doesn't mm -hmm. change during the election cycle or it hasn't passed. Okay, thank you. They would rather not be here during the cycle. They got their hands full. <laughs> yes. Good afternoon. Um, to follow up on what the marshal said, yes. Um, that's a major project we got finished and um, couldn't have done it without his help because he was always available to answer questions that we had in the Attorney General's office to answer questions. Uh, I have my written report. And last month we'd also <coughs> talked about the time to fill. Um, I had a couple other projects that I had to finish out, but I'm working on it. And I found one of the previous reports that I had submitted in 2016, so I want to add that to you. And so I'm going to give that to you um, through Mr. Enlow, and it'll either be like a late for this report or an early one for next report. So I'm just going to have that so where you can look at it. Um, I've got it worked up through the end of fiscal year 2017, which would be September. September 30th, 2017, because the next year starts. I follow the fiscal year. Um, it's been fairly um, consistent the last three years. We'll see how 2018 is going. And I did tell my staff that um, I was offering the invitation to have you guys come visit and do a more in-depth discussion on um, each of their steps in the process because I have a separate group that does the background part and I have a separate group that um, is the HR analyst who deals more with the department and gets it posted and does all the stuff um, in between. So I'm going to coordinate with um, you guys and Mr. Inlow and get available dates and um, like we can see who can come on which days, which ones you're more interested in as far as topics go. And if it, you have a topic other than those two, like you want to know about training too, let me know because those are three different people and we'll just go through the process. And as we go through the process, if you do me one favor, when you're thinking about the process on what you think, just a number in your head, from the beginning to the end, if you would just say, this is how long this should take, get a number in your head. And in fact, you guys could all anonymously write them down and we can go through and talk about the expectations versus what we're currently able to do. And then we can just kind of find out the big picture, what we need to change, what probably can't change. And um, like, for example, on this entire process, being with HR, I own the entire process from beginning to end. Either my staff are doing it or I have the pieces in place that allow the department to do what they need to do to get someone hired. Like I'm giving them a panel or I have the system in place where the candidate applies. And within that entire structure, I also have a part where um, it's me and my staff doing it we from the this point to this point these are our days and um if you've been here uh, over the last two or three years we've talked about how long posting takes how long we um, attribute to how long the candidate whether that is if they have to give notice or if there's another piece of paper we need from them in the process we split out from the beginning when we started we had the day that you put your name in for a job. Say, hey, I like this job, this is the number, I want to apply, to the time an applicant actually sits in the chair. And we do this so we can figure out, because um, it was never really one problem. And each case is different on how many days each one takes. So we kind of look at each one, 
we calculate each day and see if we can find any patterns to change. For example, over the last, go with last four years, on average, if a person had to give notice or um, the time it takes us between an offer to do their initial drug test and get them in to the job on the ne next Monday, it takes about 13 days. The second part that we look at um, is posting. You know, we put it on the internet, we may do a paper, we may do a, um, some kind of spoke posting in a specialty journal for um, certain professionals we need. On average, over the last three years, that's on average 10 days. Can I ask a quick question? Sure, are you? Yep, Mason, while we're talking about it. So, how long is usually when you post it on the internet? Is that what you were getting ready to say, 10 days? Uh, yes, the, on the first posting, if everything, um, if I only have to post once, it will be no matter what day I post it, because you, you notice if you look at them, they look different each day. So we don't wait until like a Monday through a Friday. So when we have one ready, we stick it on a Wednesday. Those are five days, five business days. Five. If there's a weekend in there, it's posting on the weekend. We can't do anything with it till we get back on Monday, but it's sitting there a certain so amount of time. Five days. For one posting, that's what we normally. And then you take it off. <clears throat> Sometimes you can ask for a longer posting, but um, on <coughs> average, it's. Five days is pretty quick. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty quick. I've had different ones apply and then wait and wait and wait and wait. But if you're putting it on there, average five days and taking them off, that's, that's pretty quick. My and, and on this one, this was counted into the fact that maybe we didn't get someone on the first one. Um, and when we do an average, there's always one that goes higher than that. And there's one where it's like, hey, right at five, posted once, we got an applicant, we got it out. So on. That's where I was. Thank good. you. And um, I'm going to put the report in there because I do a lot more explanation of, of about what each group takes, what we count for each group. Like um, if I say posting took this much time, I tell you kind of what each one means. So it's like a four-page document. I just found the old one I built on it, and I put a couple of new charts on to supplement it. So you'll have plenty of time to run through. And if you have any questions ahead of time, give me a call. And that way, I meant to have this in earlier. I just had to stop and get another thing done that um, was no less important, just more time sensitive. Okay, do I have any questions? Councilor Walker, sit. I just wanna hear about the Cherokee Nation Marshal, uh, their, their pay increases. I think that's on the next. It's supposed to be this month. And uh, so that, that may chart. be at ENF, I'm not sure. So. To okay, that's this afternoon. Is it, oh, so it's going to happen this afternoon? I believe so. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, uh, Councilor Shaw, you have a question? Yes, I do. Neeson, on uh, March the 8th, I called Human Resources and I asked for a copy of the job description to be emailed to me, and they said that they would uh, be sending it. And I didn't hear anything until March the 12th when you called me. And I explained to you that I had a constituent who asked for a copy of a job description. And uh, you said that I couldn't have it, that you wouldn't give it to me. And when I said, why, you said, because I don't want to. And I said, Nason, oh no, word for word. I said, Nason, I don't understand. And I said, why won't you give it to me? And you said, I don't want to. Could you please give me your reasoning on that? Why I didn't phrase it like that? You phrased it word for word like that. I have no problem with my hearing. We had a discussion, and I believe I initiated the call. You did? Okay. And we had kind of talked about it. And the portion that I left it with is you made a couple of good points, and I would look into it. But I have never released one before. But me, just because I haven't released one in the past by itself, is not a good enough reasoning. Does any of that sound familiar? No. Okay. I will, in my due diligence, make sure that any other time I speak with you, I will have someone else in the room. 
Oh, and I we'll think... just make sure there's no further disagreement or anything else. You know, that's a blatant lie on what you're saying, and I know that, and you do too. And I will be happy to pay for a lie detector test on both of us to verify the truth on this, because I thought it was entire, entirely disrespectful. You know, to withhold a duty description that contains no personal information is mind-boggling to me in your position. I can't believe this elected body here that represents Cherokee citizens cannot get a job description from our HR director. That's all I asked for. That's all I asked for. I didn't ask for anything bad. I asked for just one simple job description. But you did not want to. I said I've never released one before. Mm -hmm. And there's a, an easy way to fix this. File a FOIA or a GRA. If I'm not moving fast enough, because that's the actual law. <laughs> this is a job description, Ace. It's not open heart surgery. A simple job description. Now, is that is that a request that that, you, that has taken place in the that's past? That's how, if you want to re request for a document, um, especially in this case when you're getting one for a constituent, um, best case for you, that's a FOIA. Okay, let's say we didn't do a FOIA. I, I guess my, my, my question was, have you released a job description before? I can find no instance where I've released a job description. Okay. And what I have done in the meantime is looked at what has been listed in the, like when I post something, you've all seen the posting where it gives, here's your recommendations, here's the educational requirement stuff. That is, are some of the things that are actually on a job description. So right. that's why I was looking into on the reason to, um, like I say, the reason why I've never done one is not in itself a reason to continue not doing it. Okay. So actually, that's a project I'm working on. Okay. All right. Councilor Shaw, anything else? No, but I, again, my offer, I will be happy to pay for that lie detector test and have you take it, and I'll take it too, and share the results with council. Because what you're saying is dishonest. And I, you know what? I can take about anything but a liar. I can have somebody disagree with me, and I can respect that. But to lie, I don't deal well. I don't deal well with it. And I was very, I was so disappointed in that comment. I don't want to. <coughs> that sound like me. Okay. Uh, oh, um, anything else? <coughs> you want to continue, or are we going to wrap this up? Well, we're a couple steps past the Constitution already. Yeah. We'll right. leave it at that. We'll let's stay there. Yes, Councilor Wongstick. Just get the job description. This is easy. It's as simple as that. Just, I'm sorry? Just get the job description, just <coughs> print it off, and just send it to her. Simple. It's a done deal. <coughs> that's, um, that's a quick solution. The four-year request procedure, I think, um, we're online, so description. please that, follow that, that's it. That's online? Yeah, did I haven't done for you lately. <coughs> okay. Speaker, that's all I have. Okay. All right, it's online. I, that's all I have. Okay. All and right. I think there's also <laughs> another statute that talks about GRA. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, and another interesting topic. If I accidentally give something out that I shouldn't have, last time I looked, I have to check, I haven't looked at it in a while, but it was actually could get me fired and sometimes charged with a crime. So I'm a little cautious. <coughs> okay. Yes, Councilor Critton. I just want to be clear. So if I have a constituent I'm wondering about a certain job that may have passed, but takes y'all, um, if they, it comes up again, what what is that job description? Do I need to go to a four-year or do I need to come to you? If you have a constituent, excuse me, if you have someone who wants a document, the proper procedure for them to do is file a FOIA. And if it's a public record? Well, that seems confusing. That seems like it could, this thing we're trying to shorten, getting people jobs, if I have to FOIA what they may be you know, applying for, I don't see how that, that would help. I may not have understood your question. If you go on the... If I get a constituent saying, Sean, if I apply for maintenance, custodial work at Cherokee Nation Complex. Yes. What would my job description be? Can I come to you? They would get one, a majority of it, or the essential portions of the job, 
will be contained in the advertisement. Say, but hey, it's I not, want to but do. If it's not advertised. Hey, Sean, do I see you no know, so and so? He works for Cherokee Nation, comes out and does X. What does that job entail? It looks like I could come to someone without FOIA in it to get to be able to explain to the constituent what that I'm not actually advertising. Maybe. Maybe you are. If it's advertising, um, I would normally point them or you say, hey, it's online. Or if it's posted and they. Attorney General's looked at office, can, is that against the law for him to. Um, <clears throat> If we would ask for a job description, is that a law somewhere stating that he can't send it? I don't know the answer to that. I can link that. But typically, when you request documents from a department, we've, we've gone document or document, document or just information. Hey, hey, Nathan, you come present to us all the time. Uh, well, what's the job description here? Are they going to be sweeping the floors or laying brick? You know, is is it really a well, that's, document that's retrieving than thing? A four -page job description, though, but the, the typical process when you all want documents. Want to share it and put it online and whatever is a FOIA because that's all public information. If it's confidential and it's GRA and you want to keep it, you have to keep it. And this is a process we've talked about before, and it's more of a process in the sense of if if you could call any department anytime you wanted and get any document that you wanted, departments would be doing nothing but responding to tribal council requests for information. Well, when I call, GRA, it's from a constituent. That we all work for when I call and I'm trying to get answers I assume like you were trying to do so that that's of the utmost importance to me so I expect people answering me to answer them so that's not a far stretch but to get documents your a job description is a document they're three four five six sometimes seven pages long depending on what they are they have all the qualifications you have to have <coughs> all the that's a document in a department. And if you want a copy of that, there are ways, there's a process through which you get that. I don't, I don't know that that's protected. That's so, okay, I, don't, I didn't even have nobody call me today, but it sounds like confusing. Okay, okay. Sean, my recommendation is always do a GRA. If it's confidential, it'll be marked confidential. If it's not confidential, All right. Thank you, Talina. Appreciate you. Yeah. Do, do we have, also, too, also too, you know, we're talking about job descriptions here. Oh, my. A, a job is not going to be posted unless there's a job description, right? Yes. There's a job description for anything that's posted. Yeah, you would so. hope because I'm not going to apply for a job if I don't see the job description. <laughs> I want to know if I qualify first. Yes. Even before they post, we check to make sure there's one on sure. file and even if it needs to be updated before they post. Is it point okay. positions? On online, on a job description somewhere. Appointed positions mm -hmm. online. Their job description? Mm -hmm. I don't believe so. Okay, so then we have the GRA. I got it. Or it may actually be a FOIA. That's the. Okay, all right. Let's wrap this up. I okay. have one question. Uh, or go uh, get an HR and learn orientation and all that. Yeah, Councilor Shaw. Yes, Chrissy. Do we have any jobs so important? We have to FOIA request. I mean, really, it's job descriptions. And have it help our kids who go to job fairs. How are they getting job descriptions? FOIA isn't about the importance of that. Again, this is a this is a process of how this branch gets information and records from the executive branch, or, or how the public does. Again, it's FOIA is public information. Job descriptions. But again, this goes back to. I know, I hear them all the time. So somebody is calling and they want X. And sometimes X is one page and sometimes X is 300 pages. And if we don't have a process by which we process requests and release documents, we don't have any control over, you know, people who are supposed to be doing other jobs are busy answering the phone all day and going to hunt something down because somebody wants it right now. And talk about fear and intimidation when a tribal counselor calls an employee and says, I want X and I want it right now. That's fear and intimidation. I don't think and you said that. No, what process, I said. I just needed a job description for a constituent. That's all I needed. A FOIA, I think they could do it. I think this is a public document, but we have a process of releasing that information. What we don't have is people just pick up the phone and call and say, I want this and I want it right now. And that employee, they don't know. 
whether or not something is confidential or who can have it and who can't. And that's why we have a FOIA process. That is the process by which you get government documents. Whether it is a job description or it's you know something confidential that's related <coughs> pursuant to a GRA and only you all can see it and no one else can see it. But it, it's about the process. It's not about not providing information or trying to hide it. It's about a, a standard process of this is how you get records. So uh, again, I, I think without looking at the law because I don't know it word for word, but I think a job description is probably something absent some type of competitive advantage that a constituent could get via FOIA. The person who wanted that probably could fill out the FOIA form and turn it in and get a copy of the job description. I never heard the law, such a long way around the bush to get some little something like a job description in my life. This is why we have too many jobs, per, not too many jobs, we're probably spending too much money on, you know, we need to reevaluate this procedure at some point. Because this is just a simple request for a job description, that's all this was. And to have to go to such trouble, it may, that's why people don't trust us. Seriously. You have to FOIA a job description? Heaven help us at job fears when we have them up here at Sequoia is all I can say. And by the way, Mr. Morton, I guarantee you, I stand by that offer. Anytime we want to do a lie detector test, because I don't like working with liars. Mm -hmm. You understand that right well, now? I think you made your point. I want to make it again. Okay. That's it. Well, so and you understand when I'm we standing. Hey, we're about ready to okay. uh, adjourn this I just this need meeting. to do one thing. And you understand when I'm up here, I represent the principal chief, and I have to be very careful about my responses because yeah. – I am not a private individual at this moment. I'm a representative of the executive branch, and I will present myself with. We know where you get your directives, and I'll, that's all executive yes. directors. But thank you for the report. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move down to old business here. Uh, Councillor Shaw, you want to take that? Yes, I certainly will. Uh, Last month, uh, we asked Talena, we, well, actually, I'm the one that suggested that we talk about the Constitutional Convention. We, we need to have an, an idea of when this is going to happen. Uh, and we've had a lot of questions about, at least I have, I'm not sure about you and your constituents, but my constituents have asked me. So I asked Talena to draft this up very simply into a time, uh, timeline for us so that we could have something to work for and uh, go by. Talena, would you like to go over this or would you like me to? I think we discussed this a little bit, a little bit last month, kind of. <laughs> um, I just prepared a timeline that just explains how the 99 Constitution came about, and the timeline for the uh, question to be placed, uh, the time when it was placed on the ballot, um, when the Constitution um, Adopt, uh, when the 1999 Constitution was adopted by the delegates, when it was approved, um, and when it was submitted to a vote of the people. There's a lot of dates there, um, but the main one is that uh, the ballot question was put on the ballot in 95 as to whether to have a constitutional convention or not. Um, and then in 2003, that's when the 99 Constitution was ratified or adopted by the citizens of the Cherokee Nation. And I've also included <coughs> two sections of the Constitution. Uh, one is the requirement that this question be placed on the ballot uh, and submitted to the citizens of the Cherokee Nation at least once every 20 years. Uh, and the other part of the Constitution that I included was the part that says this constitution shall become effective when ratified by the registered voters of the Cherokee Nation. So I know that I know there's probably some questions about um, when this constitution became effective and at what point we need to place this ballot question on the ballot. <coughs> I need to start. I need to start this whole conversation with the question: How close are we? By, of getting clarification on the last constitution, whether it is it is certified by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Sure, because we're 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 looking at and discussing a new constitution. We still have question marks on our old constitution. All right. So this is the long history, right? I'm not going to go through all of it, but um, uh, at our 
old constitution said it has to pr be approved by the BIA. We removed that provision by a vote of the people. Okay. We then ask the BIA to, and I say we, this is Cherokee Nation, this goes back um, across multiple administrations, and um, the Cherokee Nation ask the BIA to approve the constitution that removed the requirement to approve the constitution, which that in of itself was a question, should we be asking them to approve once we removed it? Um, the issue with the Freeman cases was a big holdup in that um, because we were, um, I think, very close at some point to getting BIA approval of the 99 slash 2003 constitution that removed the provision that said the BIA had to approve it, but because of elections that were upcoming and court cases that were going on with the um, Freedman Amendment, they, um, they refused to approve that. Okay. The Cherokee Nation then withdrew its request for approval of the Constitution by the BIA. Um, there, is, there are ongoing efforts to get the BIA to recognize that our current Constitution that does not require the BIA approval is the official approval, is the official Constitution of the Cherokee Nation. Okay. But I can tell you, and you know, this question is asked to a lot of people who have sat in this seat for con uh, people who are being appointed to the bench and uh, other various positions, but it is, it is the legal position of our office that the 1999, I don't know why we call it that. That's when we had the convention, right? We didn't vote on that until 2003, so right. we should be calling it the 2003 Constitution. Right. But it is our position that the 2003 Constitution is the legal binding governing document of the Cherokee Nation. It is a constitution that you all were elected under. It is a constitution that our office is created under. Um, we have as, um, you know, technically only since 2006 have we acted as that, our constitution. And that is, um, we went one step further than Talena's analysis and said the proposal was, the, the constitution was, the constitutional convention was called in 1999. That's when we had the last one. In 2003, we voted on the Constitution. There was some questions and court cases about the validity of and the effect of that Constitution. In 2006, our Supreme Court ruled and said that the 2003 Constitution superseded the 1975 Constitution and was the governing document. So there's, and I don't know this is a disagreement. I think that, and, and just a little aside, you can have it any time you want, right? It, it only has to be at least once every 20 years. But sure. the Constitution was voted on in 2003, so we know at least by 2023 it should be put to a vote of the people as to whether or not we should have another constitutional convention. There is a valid argument that because our court didn't recognize that as our Constitution until 2006, that it adds another three-year period in which to do that. Okay. But we – but – 2023 would be 20 years from the time that the Cherokee people voted on what we all refer to as the 1999 Constitution. I say all that to say that I do not think that we are out of, I don't think we are in violation of the Constitution in that we have not yet called a constitutional convention. And there is um, ongoing work with the federal government to get them to acknowledge that the 99-2003 document is the governing document of the Cherokee Nation. Okay. Thank you for that timeline. That, that's very helpful. Uh, yes, Speaker. One question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, when was the provision removed from our Constitution for the uh, uh, Bureau to not approve our Constitutions? That was done. 2003. The amendment. Yeah. The amendment. Yeah. The amendment and it was voted on. It was, it was not... I think that was a separate vote, right? There was, it was a because there was like a May June. There was like a May vote to remove that. The general election is when the amendment <coughs> was voted on, and so once and it was dependent upon whether that was adopted by the citizens. So when the citizens adopted that amendment to the Constitution, then they during the special election, no, the runoff election that they had in July. I think it would have been July of that year is when the Constitution as a whole was put to the vote. So we had an amendment to the 99 what year, Constitution what, what year was that, Talena? Was it 2003? 2003. 2003. So 20 years, so from, from there. Then the court, though, didn't, didn't approve it till 06. Right. So, so, that's, so that's there's, the, there's oh, an okay. argument that there's another three years added. But 
the, the vote of the current constitution that says we must do it every 20 years occurred in 2003. So if you add 20 years of that, you're 2023. So it has to occur prior to, uh, prior to 2023, unless the three years that it took the court to recognize, our court to recognize it extends that. Okay. But we're not out of compliance. The 95 was, or 99 was not the date. I didn't think we were out of compliance. Is yeah. it the BIA that has the final say or the tribe? <clears throat> we actually do. We're kind of uh, in this dilemma. We're asking the BIA to approve something that we don't want them to be part of anymore. <laughs> we're asking them, I, I think the better language is that we are asking them to recognize that by, that we removed that provision and that our current document is valid, valid. and legal and binding. That's all I have. Okay, yes, Councilor Shaw. Okay, I want to reiterate that the Cherokee Nation Constitution, Article 23, says this Constitution will become effective when ratified by our registered voters. It says nothing about our Supreme Court. Nothing. So you add 20 years to the 2003, so the Constitutional Convention should be on our next uh, election in uh, 2023. Do you agree with that? Again, I, th I think that it is arguable because of, and when you go back and look at what, what the cases were being, what, what was being file, filed and what was being challenged and the validity of the vote and all of those things that in the 06 case when our court said that in 2000, what the court said is in 2003 the people voted on and ratified and approved the constitution of the Cherokee Nation, that it is binding, that there were, um, for example, term limits didn't, in the Constitution didn't kick in in 03. They didn't kick in until 06 when the Supreme Court said, yes, that's our Constitution. So um, I, don't know, I don't know how we can pick and choose which provisions of our Constitution became effective in 03 and which provisions became effective in 06 when our, when our court said, as of this day going forward, and that's when they laid out the staggering of terms and the changing of the names of the justices and all of that. So the, even though we voted in 2003, what we... Um, the changes that were under the Constitution <coughs> didn't take effect until 2006. It's when we changed the name of the courts. It's when we they entered staggered term limits. We changed the ju Judicial Appeals Tribunal to the Supreme Court. All of those coincided with our court saying, yes, this is a valid document. So for some purposes, we said it, it took effect <coughs> in 03, and for other purposes, we evidently said it didn't take effect until 06. But we're talking about three years between 03 and 06, neither, neither of which are here yet, right? So we are, not, we are not in violation of the Constitution by not currently having a constitutional convention. You know, I was thinking about this the other day, about the fact that we will have another big election in uh, four more years, which would be uh, 2023. If we do it two years later, I'm concerned that there won't be as many citizens. And I'm not just, voting. just to be sure, I'm not advocating it. It right. is up to this body to decide when it goes to the people. And the vote of the people is whether or not they want to have a constitutional convention. They may say no. They may say we like the Constitution exactly how it is, and we don't think we need to open it back up and be involved in all it's the possible. political stuff. But what, what it says is this body submits to the people at least once every 20 years for a vote whether or not they want to have one. And I'm not saying that it shouldn't be done in, in 2020. Just, just to be clear, I'm not saying that you, you shouldn't do it, you know, you do it next year. You do it, well, you can't do it next month because it's feasibly impossible, but it can be when this body chooses right. for it to be. Chrissy, I, how do you propose, Talena, you too, how do you propose we resolve this date line? Uh, I mean, you know, to consider. I don't know if we have to. I think if, if the majority of this body believes that 2023 is the date, then prior to July, whatever the last election was, 2023, that this group should vote for it to be put to a vote of the people. I just think that there is, if for whatever reason it were to go past that date and someone said, oh, we're violating the Constitution, I think there's a strong legal argument that we're not because that didn't become legally effective until 2006. But I'm not advocating for that position. I'm just saying there is, there is, we had things happen after the vote that called into question the effective date of the Constitution. And it spent time in three years in our Supreme Court system. Talena, are you in agreement with what she's saying? I think that there is a valid argument for that. Um, that depends on 
the way you look at it, I can I can see both sides. Um, but this body can decide to uh, pass a resolution and put it on um, what would be this this election, but the next election we have can place that resolution um, or place that question on the ballot and let the people decide. Then you don't have you don't have that legal issue. I mean, it can be placed on the ballot at any point by council. Um, so. Sound like we could place it on 23 or 20 or 26, either one. I mean, I just, I just yeah, want next to, year or the year after that. Yes. I mean, that's you, you can be. do it before. You just sure. can't. The question is, there's a there's a violation of the Constitution if it is not put to a vote of the people every 20 years. Right. And so if if for whatever reason the, the vote failed, I don't know if for whatever reason it wasn't on there in 2023. I'm saying there is an argument, and we're, we're attorneys. Of course, she's going to say, yeah, I see that argument, but here's the other side, and I'm gonna, that's what we do, right? There is yeah. an argument that passed 2023 to 2026 because it took three years for the court to recognize it as the official document that we're not out of compliance. And I don't know what the court would do. I assume if the court found that we were out of compliance, they would order that it be put on a ballot and put yeah. to the vote of the people. I mean, that, I think that would be the remedy there. I just want to make sure that we all have looked at our – our, our bylaws here make sure that we're in compliance but I, I, want I to think rush the one into thing I think the one thing that we both agree on a hundred percent is anything 2023 or earlier absolutely keeps us in compliance because there were questions about well the the Constitution's the 99 so is this the year sure and I think that we both agree that it does not have to happen this year right in order for us to be in compliance with the Constitution okay so everybody good? No. Yes, Councilor Critton. Yeah, I'm just, I can't see if there's an argument. I can't see why they would they would argue not to do it. And you know, some say three, some say six. And a vote of the people. And do they want to dig into this? Um, I don't know what the what the holdup is really. And if they say no, they say no. It's not so. they, it's you. It's this, these 17 people are the ones <laughs> right. who decide when it goes right. on the ballot. So just somebody has to lay it out there and say, we're going to, does it have to be an election a year? A resolution. It can be no. a general or a special election. So I think we need to get a work group up and figure out if we want to do it and lay it out there. My next your, question is what, what jobs were created under the constitution that we follow? You said attorney general. Marshall. Um... The Secretary of, uh, of Ag, how many written natural resources? resources. The all of the justices that used to be the Judicial Appeals Tribunal, and we didn't have a district court and a Supreme Court. We had one court, and the 99 changed it to a district court and Supreme Court, and changed them district court judges and Supreme Court justices from Judicial Appeals Tribunals. They were mainly for employment termination appeals. They're called uh, Tribunal Appeals Court. Really, basically, what they were. So, what was that again? The Ag. Marshall, Secretary of State, added district court judges, changed the JAT to the Supreme Court. <coughs> um, there, there are other changes than that, I'm, but that, I think those are the only. So if we did a constitutional convention, that would be up for question too, those positions? I mean, whether or not we have three branches of government is up for a question. If we do a constitutional convention, probably we can, not. We can literally. Those cabinet level, I would say, <laughs> stay in place. You don't no. want to go backward. Well, no, I wasn't saying I want to do anything. I'm just quite yeah. wondering if, if, if that anything, would affect anything that is in the Constitution can be changed in a constitutional convention. Right. When was, number of when counselors. Was those the, it was before '99 or 2003, right? That those positions didn't exist right so before the before the 99 constitution we should really start calling it the 2003 we should put that in our lexicon but, but those positions did not right. exist secretary of state attorney general's office and i i can't remember um i there i believe treasurer was in there there's actually on the cherokee nation website it was secretary go, treasurer secretary it wasn't treasurer just was one. secretary yeah. If you go to the Constitutional Convention tab, there is a comparison of the 1975 and the 1999 Constitution, and it shows you everything that was changed in the 99 Constitution in red huh. and what the differences were. So, Talina, you might uh, dig that up for us and share with what changes that were made for the, Would that help, Council? Well, just the Attorney General's Office, so you're saying don't have a really a preference when we do it? No. 
right. Yeah. Would, would you do that, Talene? Okay. It's what changes yeah, can, that were made. Yeah, I have. I have it. I know where it's at. I'll send, okay. I'll send it, and it's Please. it's really. Yes. Hey, Councilor Walsh, how do you add a uh, cabinet level position? Do you have to do a constitutional referendum if you want to add a cabinet position to the constitution? The constitution actually says that the chief may add other cabinet positions as approved by council. I believe. Yes, it's as in, needed. At, and I think it's approved. Yeah. Gotcha. Like we need a secretary of education in the worst way. And secretary of health. Yeah. That's a priority of ours. We've always said education is number one. We don't have Secretary of Education. We've gone all the way around it. And said, but where education is priority. Yes, Councilor Shaw, let's wrap this up. We gotta get I'd like take to care propose of business. that we form a task force to study uh, when the date will be that we post a constitutional convention on the next ballot. Okay. I'll be on a second. I'll be on too. Okay. Got a motion and a second to establish a, a work group. Okay. Submit names to uh, to Lena or Shelley, and let's see what we can come up with. Probably need no more than five, right? Um, that good. That'd be good. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to uh, new business. Uh, Councilor Shambaugh, you have that one. This is a resolution expressly agreeing to choice of law and venue, and authorizing a limited waiver of sovereign immunity of the Cherokee Nation in connection with the software agreement with the Municipal County Assistance Incorporated. Put that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussions? Yes, Councillor Walkins. What's, uh, uh, Councillor, what, what is the, what is this you're proposing? What, what company and what's its purpose? You didn't read the proposal? Uh, what is it? Well, I'll let Gwen talk about it. Okay. It's not this is the, the municipal, oh, municipal accounting is our software system for the charter school. The OCAS. OCAS reporting okay. to the state. Gotcha. This will be our fourth year to request this. Uh -huh. Gotcha. And so, since with the uh, with the immersion school uh, pretty much staying with the, the charter status, we still got to keep the OCAS going so we can keep up with the Oklahoma accounting system. Correct? Yes. Correct. And now, is this a this is a one or three year agreement? We're gonna do one year at a time. One year at a time. Gotcha. All right, thanks, speaker. Okay. Anybody else? I just have yes, a question. Just clarification. So uh, this is nothing any different than than we've done every year at this time. It's just when our agreement or contract or whatever we have with OCAS comes up, you come back to us. Yes, every okay. school year. All right. Thank and you. how much is that amount? Thirty-five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only thing that ever just just went all over me, where you waive a, a, a sovereign your immunity there for thirty five hundred. I just I just never could figure that one out. But you guys are educated in that way, <laughs> Councilor Lake. Thank you. you. You you made my point. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Anybody else? I got a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. The ayes have it. Abstain. Okay, one abstention here. Councillor Shambo, you got the next one. This is resolution, a resolution expressly agreeing to choice of law and binding arbitration authorizing a limited waiver of sovereignty immunity of the Cherokee Nation in connection with the use of rank one sports website. And I put that in the form of a motion. Second. Got a motion, second. Explain that a little bit there. Exactly. Uh, Ron, would you please? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's just a software system, very same, similar same to thing. Oh, okay. that uh, where he can keep uh, record. Of uh, I tell you what, I, I, just a good uh, analogy here, or, or, or possibly, uh, you know, we, we play Riverside on occasion, where we have to travel all the way across the state. Okay, and early in the year in all fall sports, every sport, you you uh, get your, your physicals, your waiver, and your medical release. Okay, and, and, and back in my day when I was coaching, you had to carry them then as, as well, and it's all hard copies. Okay, before technology came aboard. And uh, so you had to carry them with you. And because you get off the Riverside and, and you have a kid that breaks an ankle out there on the, on the football field or in the gym or whatever, you can't get in contact with the parents. You have to have something to show that it's okay to go ahead and, and uh, for a doctor to do surgery or whatever he's got to do. And so this way we have a system where we can take our phone and we can show, okay, here we've got it right here. We've checked him off. Another thing, another case is eligibility. Uh, on Fridays, 
Okay, that's when you find out if a kid's eligible, technically, that week. There's been schools that, that have not have left and not known if a kid's eligible or not. Let that kid participate and then find out Monday that he wasn't eligible. Okay, you have that because teachers are required to put it in. There's normally a probation week, and then the following week, uh, you determine whether or not the kid has to sit or not. So, anyway, those kind of things all go in this system. Uh, one, one athletic director at a large school said it's his assistant AD because it's something that's, that's very much needed. Very, very well put, Ron. I appreciate that. Yes, Councilor Walker. How, uh, how many schools are doing this, Ron? Oh, there's multiple. There's a list. There's a I, I don't list. know if we provided that list, but uh, and it's just got started. But it's there's multiple lists. Yeah, that's uh, that I know it, it is. That would be convenient to have an electronic file on hand versus carrying a bunch of you know right, with right. You the documents one. with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. When I was coaching. That was always a hassle. Yeah. So that's all I have to speak for being eligible or the. <laughs> 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 so if I read this correctly, uh, this this also lets the parents. Be aware of what's going on. Is well, that most correct? definitely? Yes, most definitely. Yeah, well, that's yeah. a good thing. That's, yeah, that's I agree. I important agree. Important as a parent to know what your kids do when they're away from home. right, right, yeah. right. It should be good. You're waving your sovereign immunity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have, yes, Councilor Critton. Speaker, um, after we vote on this, could uh, Ron and Jennifer stay just for a second for another question? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Got a motion second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, eyes have it. All right. You got it. Um, Ron, I had a constituent, and he made a good point. The Oklahoma State University uh, there in Okmulgee, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're not eligible for the, two, the 2000 scholarship. And they're, he made a really good point. I mean, we, we give it for universities, right? You know, Northeastern and different universities. But, you know, what they used to be known for, tech, now they're calling it Oklahoma State University, IT. And there's some, there's some dang good kids from Westville and Stillwell area that, that are going over there for a degree. Now, IT, that's, that's what this world is going to, and you better get on the bus or you're going to get left behind. So please look, just do some research on that unless you've got just a... Uh, an answer right now, but it, it was a pretty good little argument he made to me. Okay. Uh, any, any of the, of course, it's, it's a bachelor's degree, basically, is what you're in pursuit of, if you're in pursuit of a bachelor's and they degree. Can, uh, so it can be any institution that, that you know, that, that uh, you, you can go and get a bachelor's degree, uh, which you cannot get that. At, at now, it's my understanding that they're, they're starting that program. Right. Okay. Uh, and, if, and if that be the, the, the direction they go and what they get, then yeah, yeah, the way it's written right now, you know, now, then, then we can go ahead now and Now, is that it. written through this body? Yeah, that's what, that's what it would now, have to be. Does anybody yes. kind of agree, just when well, we're not voting on anything, but, you know, I mean, these people are IT, OSU, Oklahoma State University, IT. Part, part and, of it is the program they're selecting. So the Associate of Applied Science is more of a certificate trade type program, which would fall under career services. Right. And then with ours is a science or arts, which transfers directly into the bachelor's degrees. Right. So that's kind of the difference of where we are with that. Once we get their transcript and we kind of determine what program they're going into, that's kind of where they get cut off. Right. And if there has been some major changes, it you know, we just lay it out here. It's perfectly legal to lay that out here if we want to change something like that. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna appreciate you looking into that. Right here's your chair of education, right here. I, uh, I agree with it. I mean, if it's like I said, Ron says, if they're pursuing a, a bachelor's degree, then yeah, we need to be paying for it. But if pursuing. it's- uh, Pursuing. Pursuing, yeah, but Is if that it's- Is that the key word, pursuing? Sure. And pursuing. you know, we get a lot of people that go to Carl Albert or uh, Connor's pursuing mm -hmm. a bachelor's degree. They don't necessarily get one there, right? But, so, but, a, but, a, but a vocational, so. you're getting a license. But your applied sciences is yeah. not always going to transfer right. to that bachelor's degree. Yeah. So that's okay. kind of where we look There's at a those. difference. Well, they, they brought it to my attention. It sounded like a pretty good argument. And we'll, I know you guys do whatever you can to help kids. I trust you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. We'll take another look and see if you've got a name. You know, we can research that offline Thank and see if there's something Thank remote. Good. Thanks, All right. That takes care of our business items. I need a motion to. Uh, make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll <laughs>